um, essentially Nigeria's creative sector holds tremendous potential to unlock uh, the country's economy and provide increased employment opportunities for young people. The projections are promising. The sector is expected to be worth over six billion US dollars by 2021. And at the same time, you know, Whiskey and Bonaboy's recent wins at, at the Grammy is, indica is indicative of, of this potential. But yet, there is a prosperity narrative about Nigeria's creative sector that is yet to be written. Um, so, you know, the first thing is that Nigerian universities and tech schools have always taught some form of creativity or the other. But I mean, they suffer from the same um, problem that all, all our educational institutions suffer from. Lack of funding, lack of adequate um, teaching materials, and also even the quality of the education that is coming out of there. So I think that if I were to start, I would say that we should start looking at supporting those institutions that are there already, because we do have a lot of these schools in place. I think there are lots of opportunities. Um, I do feel that despite a number of the opportunities, one of the key things that's missing is infrastructure and how we can build infrastructure within the creative sector. For the government, it's important to begin to put the right laws in place. Um, we still have laws around piracy and copyright and, 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 and things like that, that we struggle with. Uh, getting the right collective societies in place and, and really, really beginning to establish policies that we need to let it go. Those need to be definitely looked at. So writing a prosperity narrative for Nigeria's creative sector will require that all these distortions be addressed. We clearly have to move forward and there's absolutely nothing wrong with being optimistic. But this optimism comes with a responsibility. So the, the creative sector currently exists in a time warp, if I'm going to use, you know, Tunji Ladner's theory of, of the Nigerian history. You know, the, the sector exists in a time warp where we have to deal with the problems of the past, a compounding of opportunities and challenges uh, of the present as we contemplate the future. But the biggest question remains, are we ready uh, for the prosperity ahead? What I see for the future of the Nigerian creative economy is technology and digital. And that could be positive or it could be negative. I think the jury is still out. I think across the value chains, whether it's in the tools and the processes we're using to create, whether it's music or television or film or, or visual arts or performing arts, I think that creation process will be um, transformed by the digital tools that will become available. We've always said that the creative industry is the future, but I'll dare say it's not just the future, it's the now. It's been a future for so long, right? We're seeing now that it's not just supposed to be a skill, it can be an economy. Not just an economy, it can be exportable, and it can scale, and it can earn. And I think that's where we are. It's um, one of the best uh, places to be now, creating and um, looking at the different ways we can export the value. Our estimates, our estimates suggest that the creative sector currently employs about 4.2 uh, uh, million people across uh, industries, including media, you know, entertainment, beauty and lifestyle, uh, visual art, as well as tourism and, and hospitality. And you know, all of these, their sub uh, sectors you know, underneath all of this industry. But in the next four years, we, we anticipate or we project that the creative sector can potentially create an additional 2.7 uh, million jobs. And somebody might want to ask, where, where will these jobs come from? They will come from highly specialized roles such as videography and animation, generalist roles such as project managers, lawyers and accountants, you know, tech creative roles such as digital marketing, um, and the sales of non-fungible you know, tokens. Now, the creative sector contributes hugely or immensely to Nigeria's GDP. Um, from what we could find, the entire industry is said to contribute you know, about three, five trillion naira to, to Nigeria's GDP. Not only that, according to the United Nations, Nigeria's film and movie industry is said to be you know, the second largest in the world after India. 
in terms of film pro production. And Nigeria's music industry is also growing year on year and is expected to add you know, an additional 13.4% of growth by, by the end of the year, according to uh, uh, PwC. I describe this as the opportunities that exist within the sector. Now, one is urbanization and increasing youth population, right? Nigeria's youth population is estimated at 120 million below the age of 35. And by 2030, we're expected that, that expecting that that number will grow uh, by more than double, right? There's also the fourth industrial revolution that is driving um, a lot of changes within, within the market. There's also the expansion of, of digitization and, and mobile penetration. Nigeria, you know, currently has the largest mobile market in Africa. And, you know, this, is, this also coincides with what COVID has come to do uh, um, recently by, you know, moving us forcefully into, you know, that digital world. But, you know, and so when you look at all of these things, while they present opportunities, they also present um, their own uh, downsides, right? But, a key focus of what we try to do in this research is to look at, you know, uh, the labor market, you know, within the context of the creative sector, and we tr we try to understand what where the gaps, you know, exist in terms of skills and what jobs are in demand. In the entertainment industry, in the creative industry, all skills are are needed. And there's gaps in the mostly in management. Um, creative management of creatives and management of artists um, that's in both sectors in all honesty uh, so there is a management gap there is a gap in business management specifically as well and on the technical side I think when it comes to technical skills we need um, virtually everything um, it's not like we need one more than we need the other I think it's if you, from videographers to uh, makeup artists is needed on every level animators are needed but what is even lacking in that area for me it's um, what i call um, a deep artistic insights we are seeing a shift you know more and more employers are shifting from you know an emphasis on you know uh, uh, an emphasis on you know technical just technical roles into now a balance between you know technical roles soft skills as well as you know digital skills our baseline, you know, the, the opportunity of the work that we are currently doing allows us to, to you know, do a baseline around, you know, soft skills development. Um, and we surveyed, you know, about 34,000 um, young people, unique job seekers. Um, and, you know, it took out, and from that average, we, we see a total average score of 48%. You know, and this is less than 50%, so, which, you know, brings to the fore the issues around, you know, employability. So the essential, you know, this essentially, you know, indicates that job seekers are generally weak with regards to soft skills, the soft skills being measured. And the key areas where we are finding gaps are in innovation, in critical, critical thinking, and in creativity, um, as well as professionalism. If people are looking for work or if people acquire skills and they're not able to get jobs what is the essence of the training so i think that an institution like jobberman is actually a, a, fa a fantastic link for the future first of all I'm, I'm inspired by what jobberman has done over over the years i was there you know in the day ones when jobberman was launching and you know you know the founding team and so to, to now be Africa's biggest jobs platform and, and, and training platform is such an incredible feat. Uh, setting goals and targets to actually effectively build the, the number of young people that are working can only be great for any industry. There are bright young minds out there who actually have creative ideas, who have refreshing takes and perspectives that can only help to enhance the, the robustness and the actual profitability of any industry. Um, Africa is a growing population. We know that by 2050 we'll hit about 400 million people. That's just uh, Africa. Um, the continent is on a fast rise and there is a huge population of young people here. But I don't think many young people have access to the quality of um, training that would help them become sustainable and employable. And that's, that, that programs like this would do that for us. Social norms as well as limited opportunity for female education, uh, you know, limits the prospects. You know, from our findings, we see that the creative sector 
actually provides opportunities for, for women. Right now, um, there aren't in, enough women in the in top spheres. I say that as somebody who's actually at the helm of a company, but and also knowing other women who are heading companies, but um, there needs to be more done to ensure that these women are nurtured, their careers are nurtured, that they are listened to, that they're given equal weight and respect. Um, I think that, you know, there's this taboo of being a tough woman in um, the creative industry and have, and being seen to do whatever it takes to get ahead and you get labelled. I wouldn't say there's a classic gender difference or gender uh, imbalance. Um, uh, you know, I would say that overall the structures and the support in, around the industry from primarily a regulation point of view, from an understanding of the industry is where the weaknesses lie. The creative industry is actually doing a lot in, in terms of creating some form of parity because I know that there are a lot of female executives in the film industry. Um, so we have a lot of women that are producers, executive producers, maybe not a lot of directors, a lot of more of us uh, are getting into directing like myself. So we have a bunch of female directors now. But any decisive driven person who comes to the table with quality expertise cannot be stopped. And I think that's what it is for most people, um, that even while we encourage men to trust as much as possible and support the women in their communities and even in the creative space to grow, we also want the women themselves to also embrace the leadership that is available to them now and don't even take themselves out of the equation because uh, culture, society, religion has told you so all your life as children. I feel like the next step for the industry relating to gender is we need to have much stronger systems for safeguarding of women to protect them from, from harassment and exploitation, as I said. And whether it's on sets or whether it's in, in teams, in workplaces, whether it's on projects, I think we need to have start to hold ourselves to much more account. You know, because of the flexibility it provides and, uh, uh, and, the, and the limited barriers to entry. Um, and some social settings for, for, for instance, socialize women in ways that limit the aspirations to specific kinds of jobs, you know, such as nursing and, and and teaching. But you know, the creative sector creates an you know, an, an escape route for women, you know, to find expression in di in different ways um, that they think about, in ways that they think about work, you know. And that's that's one very interesting thing we find we found amongst um, of how relevant or how important the creative sector is is for women. The COVID season was particularly tough for, I, I guess it was tough for everybody, but it was particularly tough on us because most people in the creative space um, are contract workers. They get, they get paid on a particular job and um, so clearly um, the industry is not that structured to allow them to have savings, um, etc. So it hit a lot of people very hard. Um, COVID has been probably one of the most interesting scenarios that we've faced, um, not just in the creative sector, but as, um, as a species. Um, but I think when you look at the creative sector, some of the best work that I've seen recently has literally come about because of the fact that people are in their homes. Um, you look at the fact the rise of um, people engaging in creating NFTs uh, and actually utilizing blockchain technology to, to further their artistry. Um, and I think you can't say it's come about because of boredom per se, but more because people have had more time on their hands to sit and look at the bigger picture. But that's on one side. Now, there is the other side where you find the growing demand of content. Uh, as an animation studio, we realized that a lot of people started to fall back to animation as an alternative where they could not have live action. So you realize that those, uh, those industries are likely to benefit from um, a COVID reality or a COVID lockdown because you don't necessarily need to be on the field to film. Every creativity comes with its own unique or peculiar ten um, tendency. So you want to be able to play to the strength of your own industry. More than 70% of the employers we, we, we engaged, you know, um, say they are not likely to uh, to lay off workers, and you know we found this very, uh, very, very interesting, which is also indicative of the fact that you know many employers within this space are actually innovating and looking for ways um, to to remain, you know, relevant. And so the pandemic has impacted the creative sector in 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 ways that are, you know allows them to rethink partnerships to rethink how they are innovating to create new products and di diversify their business
The, the truth is, the future is bright for Nigeria if <laughs> leadership is right. <laughs> I mean, you don't need to be a genius to figure that out. The only thing holding us back in Nigeria is not the human capacity. It is leadership. I think that Afrobeats music will be the next big wave of, of, of music uh, across the world. I think that our Nollywood and our content uh, uh, aspects, we still have some work to do, but I think that it's being seen and understood by, by black and brown people across the world. Um, if we put the training, the right training in place, uh, we will unlock the potential in this space, but it cannot continue to remain a potential. It's about time we get into making it a reality. And I think um, that's what this is for me contributing my own part to seeing that the creative industrialization of Africa is accomplished in our lifetime. Reimagining the future of the creative sector will require uh, uh, substantial investment in skills development from what we have found. You know, both, both in technical skills and in soft skills, and maybe I should also emphasize digital skills here. You know, prioritizing regulation because of the challenge of informality, you know, uh, is, is an imperative. Improving working conditions for women, you know, uh, and reducing the vulnerability and volatility um, around, you know, work and improving opportunities for, for them to earn, you know, a, a proper living wage is something that we must begin to do something about. You know, the, 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 the employment statistics, you know, show that three in five women are unemployed, most of whom are. are uh, have a tendency to be underemployed and so we need to emphasize you know this if we want to increase uh, or reduce the, the gender gap within within the labor market. Now investment in skills development through inclusion of soft skills and digital skills within our curriculum is something that we must have you know a conversation around. I think the Nigerian educational you know the, what we call our curriculum today you know see many moons and it's important that we now begin to, because this is what, you know, employers are now beginning to emphasize. You know, digital skills, creativity, innovation, critical thinking, professionalism, these are things that must permeate, you know, our, our curriculum from primary to tertiary uh, education so that we can reduce the backlog of, of the analog reality. And lastly, supporting the industry through through a gender responsive policy, focus on leveraging women's interests while also addressing specific uh, women's specific needs will be very very helpful. Um, this is because the creative sector provides more opportunities for women due to low barriers to entry. Um, it also provides opportunity for entrepreneurship, self-employment, um, and that's because of work flexibility that it creates. Uh, for them.